Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will show you how you can create a map animation just like what you saw a few seconds ago using Microsoft PowerPoint. Now it's common knowledge that we tend to use Microsoft PowerPoint for regular presentations, but sometimes you might be surprised that it actually can do certain things that you probably might not have expected it to do. And especially with the recent versions of uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, this has become even easier and less challenging. Alright, so let's get cracking. I'm going to open up Microsoft PowerPoint and just to let you guys know, I'm using Microsoft uh, 365 version and usually when you open up a workspace for the first time, what you would see is this blank white color space. And if you want to add a certain background to that, you can do that as well simply by heading over to design and right over here you can choose a background from a number of different themes which actually can be customized further according to your preference as well particularly uh, when it comes to let's say selecting the color that you would like to add instead of the color that's actually being assigned by default now before i go ahead with this i would like to give you guys a bit of an insight on the possible data sources from which you can obtain the maps that we are going to use for our tutorial so my first source would be this templates.office.com. It's the official website of uh, Microsoft Office. And if you head over to this web page and if you search over here, world maps, you can see quite a number of world maps actually appearing. Now over here, for example, if I were to go with this, what I can do is I can simply download this and this will get downloaded as a file that can be opened using Microsoft PowerPoint. For example, over here you can see that it's a .pptx file, which is basically the standard uh, Microsoft PowerPoint file format. So what I can do is I can simply click over here and open this up. And from here, if you head over to View and select Slide Master, you will be able to weave these slides separately. And what I can do is I can actually click over here and make sure that I select this world map and now you can see that it's basically a map that can be moved around just like this in case if you wish to maybe copy this out into a different working space you can do that as well you can simply say copy and you can open up a new working space and simply select paste and just like that you can see that we actually can copy this out into a different place of our choice now Something to keep in mind is that all of this has been actually grouped together. So if you would like to access maybe countries individually, what you can do is you can right click over here and go to group and select ungroup. And that will basically ungroup any particular clusters that have been uh, grouped together. So let's say if I wanted to maybe select just one country, for example, Brazil, and maybe change the color of that country. I can just select format shape. And from here, if, if I go ahead and select a different fill color, that color will actually get applied to that particular country. And similarly, I can change the line color as well. For example, if I were to go with maybe a yellow outline. So that works just like that. And if you want to, of course, resize this entire thing, what I would recommend is basically selecting everything again by pressing Ctrl A. And after that, you can right click somewhere over here, go to group and group together. And when you're resizing this map, something that you have to keep in mind is that you always have to use or in fact press shift and control buttons all together so that its original proportion will be maintained. If not, what will happen is that there's a good chance that you'll actually distort this map to an unusable level. So I'm going to undo this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and control. And now if I were to change the size, you can see that everything changes while maintaining its original proportions so that even the size of the map as a whole changes. It's not actually causing any specific distortions to any particular areas. So this is one of the possible sources from which you can actually obtain your data. And in addition to this, another good source that I can recommend to you guys is mapsvg.com. And from here you can download certain maps as well in the form of standard vector graphics or SVG. So what you can do is you can head over to maps. So when it comes to USA, you can see that you can download the maps that correspond to each of the different states or the full map of USA, as well as the maps that correspond to other different countries as well. Now for this tutorial, I'm actually going to go with this option. So I'm going to click over here 
and we can download the map directly from here and in the meantime it would be interesting to actually have a look at their license over here it's licensed under creative commons so you can actually have a look at the terms and conditions over here so if you're making use of this data you can actually uh, go ahead and provide the proper attribution to the original creators as explained in this uh, web page so that's just uh, something worth noting so we're going to head back to our tutorial so you can see that the file has been downloaded so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up our working space which was this and I'm going to get rid of this file for the time being and I'm just going to drag this and drop it over here on my working space. Now personally I would actually rather use this map compared to the map that I was showing to you guys before which I downloaded from uh, Microsoft templates web page because I found that uh, the details especially when it comes to properly defining the boundaries actually quite accurate in this map compared to the one that I was showing you before. So if you're actually looking for a recommendation of a map, which one to use between the two that I showed you guys, I would actually definitely recommend to you guys this map over the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first right click over here and convert this into shape. And that will basically ungroup the entire thing as well. So now you can see that you can actually move the countries around freely if you wish to do so, just like this. And now I think it's a good time for us to add our background into our slide. So I'm going to head over to design. And from here, for this tutorial, I'm actually going to go with a bit of a darker background, something that looks like this. Because my intention is basically to zoom into a certain part of the world and highlight a certain country. And graphically, I think it would look much nicer if I were to highlight a specific country so that it really helps that country to stand out from the rest of the background, especially if you were to use a light color. So this would be actually my starting frame. And for some reason, if you think that if I actually need to do some alterations to the size, maybe to resize it or just move the entire thing around, I would highly recommend you guys that you press Ctrl A, group everything together so that you can avoid the mistake of uh, accidentally leaving out one or two shapes when you're moving stuff around. And if you happen to do that, and if you happen to not notice this beyond a certain number of steps, it's actually going to be hard to correct. And it's going to be extremely painful to do all of that again. So just make sure that you guys uh, group everything together. And again, just like what we discussed before, hold down shift and control if in case if you want to resize the whole thing. I think in my case, the original size was uh, quite all right. Once you're done with everything, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and ungroup everything. Because considering the type of technique that we're actually going to use, which is called this uh, morph transformation, for the motion tracking to work properly, when you're actually zooming in from one part to another, giving some sort of a significance to one single piece, because you can see that in this SVG file, all of these individual countries are actually recognized as just one single object. So to track the motion from this overall image into, into a single particular object, you need to have all of these ungrouped. If not, the transformation technique that we are trying to do would actually not work. I think it'll be clear for you guys when I actually demonstrate it to you. So after I'm comfortable with the setting, I'm going to right click over here and duplicate this slide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first zoom into Australia right over here because that's the first country that I'm actually going to highlight. So again, what we can do is we can press Ctrl A and group everything together. And I can zoom out the entire frame just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame Australia somewhere right in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to hold down shift and control and expand this entire map. So maybe something like this would be fine. And after I'm comfortable with the size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control A again and going to ungroup everything because now I'm going to perform some unique edits just to this Australia shape. And I'm going to start off by changing the color. I'm going to change this to be yellow color and I'm also going to add some effects. Maybe I can add a shadow and also give it a bit of a 3D look by going over here to 3D format and the top level, I'm going to select this round shape just like this. Now, one of the most important steps 
in this entire process is the application of the transformation. So I'm going to make sure that I have selected this slide and I'm going to head over to transitions and from here I'm going to select morph. So we can actually see what happens when we apply this transformation simply by heading over to slideshow over here. And now if I just click once, you can see how that transformation actually gets applied. So what's happening is that basically we are going from this whole world map into this specific object which I selected, which happens to be Australia. And what it's doing is it's basically tracking the motion of this individual object from one frame to another. And in this case, what it's doing is it's basically zooming that in and I'm going to hit escape. So my next movement would be to actually move Australia to left side just a bit so that I can add some text over here on the right side. So for that, I'm going to create another duplicate. And remember, if I were to just hold this and move it to the right side, we can do that. But then you see that we actually lose the whole perspective of Australia with respect to the surrounding countries, isn't it? And this would not be the accurate uh, location of Australia. So we have to undo it back and make sure that we select the entire thing again and move this a bit to the right side. And of course, when you're doing that, you can actually even increase the size just a bit as well. Uh, it's basically up to you. But for my case, I'm just going to leave it as it is. But guys, in case if you think that you would like to increase the size of this, again, just keep in mind that you will have to control A everything and group all the pieces together. Then hold down control and shift and only then make the changes to the size. And after that, you can place it at the at the right location, just like this. All right, so following this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add some description to the right side over here, explaining some economic factors. Now, you don't really have to bother about the actual numbers that I'm going to put in. Some might be quite outdated because uh, I was referring to a bit of an all source uh, for this information. But uh, the key thing that you can actually take out from this is how we can add some text into our slide. So we can go to insert over here and go to shapes we can add a text box like this so i'm going to first add the name of the country and following that a few economic factors uh, such as population gdp per capita and a few other facts like this so we can always actually go ahead and uh, arrange this first of all i'm going to select all of this and change my font and set the font size of this to be maybe about 60 while the font size of this information will be about 28 and what I can do is I can actually add a bit of a highlight to the text simply by selecting all of this and we can go to text options Go to text effects and from here, I'm going to add a bit of a glow like this and change the color to be blue. And of course we can change the size of that. And finally, I would add a small flag somewhere over here in front of the text, just like this. And after that, we can go ahead and select all of this and group them together so that it'll be easy for me to actually move it around. And I would like to add a simple animation to this, a simple wipe animation. So I'm going to go to animations and add a simple wipe animation. Now by default, the wipe is actually happening from down to up, but we can change that to happen from the right side. Yeah, something like this. You can always do a simple preview simply by clicking over here. And just like that, you can see that once Australia moves from the center of this of the frame to the left side, I would like to automate that to happen without the click of a button by simply assigning that to initiate not on click, but after previous. And before we go ahead and test out the entire thing, just make sure that you have ungrouped this world map into separate pieces again, because as I can recall, the last time after I resized the entire image, I didn't ungroup it back. 
And especially when we are using this morph transformation, if I happen to use an ungrouped set of objects in this frame, and when it comes to this frame, if everything is grouped together, then this morph transformation is not able to do a proper object tracking. So to help with that, we have to basically ungroup all of this again and let that object tracking get activated so that it will be actually able to track the location of this object, which should be from here to the edge of the screen when we transform from frame two to frame three. All right, so let's go back to frame one and we can open up the slideshow. And if I click over here once, you can see that it'll zoom me into Australia, placing Australia somewhere in the middle of the screen. And if I click once more, you can see that it's basically shifting to the, to the left side and followed by that, the corresponding information appears. So, so far everything seems to be working fine. And now what we can do is we can duplicate this slide and we can move on to the second country that we would like to work on. Now, before we do that, we have to actually clean up a few things. For example, this particular item, we'll be using that again, but with some different information for a different country. So that I'm going to leave it aside for the time being. And now I'm going to turn this back to be its original color, which was black. And I'm also going to go back and remove all of these effects that I added before so that it looks similar to the other objects. And now I'm going to group all of them together by right clicking and going to group and group just like this. And the second country that I'm going to focus on is Japan. I can increase the size. So if we were to follow the sequence of uh, how we are going to do things, we are first going to let Japan have a bit of a zoomed out wave. And while we're moving into that frame, we also would like this to get colored with a unique color so that we can distinguish Japan from the other countries. So I'm going to add maybe blue as the color in this particular case. And of course, I'm going to add those two other effects that I had as well. So that it pops out uh, just a little bit. And if this was my fourth frame in my next frame, I would like to zoom this in just a little bit. And while that's taking place, I would like to move this to the left side just a bit so that we can make some space for the text to appear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate of this slide and I can select the map again, resize it. And it was a good thing that I didn't ungroup everything in the previous step. And if you think this is still not enough, maybe we can increase the size a bit more and place it somewhere over here. Yeah, I think we still have some room to increase the size of the country and we can place it somewhere over here. And in addition to that, we can actually add the corresponding information, which happens to be the economic information, which describes Japan. So I will have to replace these numbers. So I'm not going to actually take much time to do that. I'm just going to instantly uh, replace all of these numbers along with the name of the country, as well as the flag. And of course, after that, you will have to apply the same effects that we applied just to maintain the consistency with the with the previous slides. And before we go ahead and play this one out, I'm just going to make sure that I ungroup everything in slide four and five. And now we can have a full slideshow again, just to make sure that everything is working properly. And from this slide to the next, you would be able to see that beautiful effect of just Japan getting highlighted while the object Australia gaining its original colors back. And if we go one more step further, you can see that it's uh, zooming in and getting placed on the left side of the screen, allowing enough room for the text to appear properly. So I guess you guys got the basic idea of uh, using this morph transformation actually to create this kind of a beautiful map animation and before we wrap up this tutorial i'm actually just going to do the exact same steps that i did just for maybe another country somewhere a bit far so that we can see that movement maybe across the entire world i'm going to select brazil which is located 
right over here. So I'm going to duplicate this slide and in the duplicated slide, we are going to go back and put this back to its original form. And since I'm going to do some adjustments to the size, I'm going to group everything together and place Brazil somewhere in the middle of the screen. Of course, we will have to size this down a bit. And we can apply the changes accordingly like this. I'm going to go with green color and from here onwards I think I might fast forward the steps because you guys are actually familiar with what we are planning to do. So I will actually run through that part so that we can quickly get to the end of the video. Alright guys, I think we are pretty much done with uh, what we need to do, but just as the final slide, I would actually like to make a duplicate of this uh, slide number 7, and I would like to get rid of all of this text and put this back to be in its original form. And after that, I would like to group all of this and fit this back to its original size. And again, just to add that object tracking functionality, I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup all of this. All right, guys, so I think that wraps up this tutorial. Uh, if you do have any questions regarding this, you can add a comment down below and I can help you guys to clear any doubts that you potentially might be having. And now I hope that you would be able to create your own map animations. And using this technique, you would be able to create quite vibrant infographic style map animations without much of a hassle. So if you think that you learned something new, you can show your support by hitting that like button. And if you would like to be notified instantly when we upload a new video to this channel, you can actually consider subscribing to this channel as well. We would also really appreciate that. So with that guys, that's a wrap. I'm just going to play this entire thing again once more. And with that, I'm going to conclude this tutorial for today. I'll see you guys again with another tutorial very soon.